So hi, uh, very happy to introduce Ori Amir here. Uh, he just finished his PhD in cognitive neuroscience at the University of Southern California, and now he's going to stick around and start lecturing starting, what, two weeks or something like this? Exactly. So as you can see from, uh, he used to be at the image understanding lab, looking at how people understand objects, how computer vision should understand objects. But then he actually decided to combine his other passion with his pictures, which is humor and stand-up. So now he seems to be the only person I know that both does research on the neural basis of humor, as well as performing stand-up routines about the life of a neuroscientist. Uh -huh. So <laughs> take it from here. Hi, everyone. Um, so a little bit of background about myself. Uh, when I was a little boy in Israel, um, my father was a comedian used to grade my jokes. <laughs> and only one of my jokes ever got an A. Unfortunately, this joke does not translate well to English, so don't expect me to be funny today. Um, I was going to say you should try us. The Messiah does not fall away from the Yeah, it, it, there's, it doesn't... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. That's a bad one. I'll vouch for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got some C minus jokes for you. Um, yeah, so ever since then, I was I was curious to try to figure out what's the formula or algorithm for making uh, funny things. Um, and when I got my hands on an MRI machine, I started uh, looking at what goes on in uh, people's brain uh, when they both enjoy humor and uh, create it. And the first experiment I'm going to talk about is one I did where uh, we looked at the difference between uh, humor appreciation and a non-humorous insight experience. Uh, aha versus haha. Yeah. Um, so, by the way, uh, feel free to um, interrupt me anytime uh, with questions. Uh, I know uh, you, m there are not many neuroscientists in the audience. So. Um, so a recent uh, data, uh, uh, large content, content analysis uh, has uh, reached a conclusion uh, that uh, almost uh, all humor has an element of discovery. That is, uh, uh, you discover a new perspective or interpretation uh, given by the punchline of, for the setup. Um, however, uh, not all discoveries are humorous, uh, as we shall soon see. Um, and previous uh, studies of um, MRI studies, there have been about uh, 30 MRI studies of humor appreciation, uh, have not uh, properly controlled for the element of discovery. And our goal is to, um, is to properly control for the element of discovery and try to see if we can identify a set of regions that are specifically selective um, for humor um, and not discovery. So. This is a typical MRI study of humor appreciation. You have a condition in which you um, have some sort of funny stimuli, um, and uh, you contrast it. You contrast activation for the funny stimuli with another condition in which uh, you look at stimuli that are as similar as possible to the humorous one, but with the element of discovery, uh, the, ele the humorous element removed. The problem is when you remove the humorous element, you also remove the element of discovery. Uh, and so you end up confounding the two, right? So when you subtract the control condition from the, um, from the humor condition, you end up with an activation um, that uh, represents a set of regions that is selective for both humor and discovery, and you can't disentangle them. Uh, another, another common type of um, MRI studies of humor compare different types of, um, uh, of humor. So you can compare uh, visual gags to language gags or uh, semantic humor to puns. Uh, but the problem remains when you subtract one type of uh, activation for one type of humor from another, uh, you end up uh, subtracting away uh, the uh, common, common uh, regions that are activated for both types of humor, which include uh, both region selective for discovery and humor. Um, by the way, uh, theory of mind, uh, e theory of mind is, is a human ability to uh, model other people's, other people's minds, their thought process, their uh, feelings, what they know. This is the ability that is um, compromised in autism. Um, so theory of mind 
jokes are basically ones that rely on theory of mind, semantic humor, rely on high level semantic uh, uh, processing. And uh, when you do an experiment, when you, where you, this, this is by the way, German humor. So, <laughs> uh, don't expect uh, to get much laughs of this talk. Um, so, but, but when you do an experiment, when you show uh, people uh, semantic humor and another condition, theory of mind humor, you, when you subtract, uh, for example, semantic from theory of mind, you end up with regions that are uh, selective for theory of mind. These are regions that we know already do theory of mind processing. So um, that doesn't help you either. Um, so remember how I told you that um, uh, some discoveries are not funny. Um, here are some examples. Uh, what you're going to see here is uh, pretty much what our uh, subject seen in the MRI. The, you see a, a drawing that is uh, uninterp uninterpretable until you uh, get a caption that tells you what the drawing is. Uh, it's rectangles with square tabs. Um, this is, by the way, the control condition that uh, doesn't give you any information about what the referent is. We also had an um, experimental uh, condition in which it gives you an insight as to what the object is. These are fluorescent light bulbs. Not a very exciting discovery, but a discovery nonetheless. i give you another example. Um, these are the physical description control. Um, this is the description that gives you an insight as to what the object is, trumpet valves. Uh, notice how you're not laughing. <laughs> yeah. uh, so some discoveries are not humorous is the point. We also had some humorous ones. Um, this is a monster checking for kids under the bed. Um, germs avoiding a friend who caught antibiotics. Um, this is a ship of, uh, arriving too late to, drown, uh, to save a drowning witch. Um, get it because it's... And, yeah. All right. That's, yeah. It, it killed at the comedy store. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so to summarize, we had, we had four conditions. Um, uh, two, uh, two were uh, ones in which you just get a physical, uh, physical description that doesn't give you any additional information. And one was an interpretive uh, description, which gave you an inf information as to what the referent of the object is. Um, the, one, uh, one, in one case, it would give you just an insight, a non-humorous insight as to what the, uh, the referent is. In this case, mechanical pencil looked at from below. Uh, or it could be a humorous, uh, a humorous referent, a chef hanging off the edge of a cliff. Um, and the arrangement of, this, uh, of the experiment was very much uh, like you experienced here. Uh, you see the, uh, the line drawing without the caption for two seconds. Then you have the caption that corresponds to one of the four conditions. Then you get to enjoy the uh, drawing without the caption for another three seconds while you rate how funny, uh, how funny you found the um, drawing caption combination to be. And here's what we found. Um, by the way, uh, these, these brain pictures look a bit funny. That is because um, we, as, as you probably know, the, the, cort the cortex uh, falls upon itself, right? So if you really want to see uh, what goes on in every layer of the brain, you have to show multiple slices. But what you can also do is uh, graphically inflate the brain so that you put the uh, inside of the cortex all on the surface. And then all you, all you need to have is uh, four views. You have the right side, the left side, and the uh, mid the two sides in the middle. Um, and um, the front of the brain is uh, over here. Like the way, the way you can tell is where um, you can think of it as a, as a dog head with this is his ear. And so he looks forward. It's a trick of the tricks of the trade. Um, Anyway, so, so that's what we found. We found uh, that uh, when you c uh, contrast insight with this physical description control, you find a certain set of regions. And then uh, when you contrast humor in its respective control, you find other, another set of regions. The insight regions are a subset of the humor regions. Uh, and to take a closer look, 
we've done uh, two analyses. Uh, we, did, we did a conjunction analysis in which we uh, look at what regions are activated for both humor and insight. Uh, and these are include the uh, some visual some visual regions. Or, uh, yeah, I know, wrong side. <laughs> Anyways, um, it worked before. Uh, this includes some uh, visual regions, um, some uh, language regions, which apparently in order to in order to uh, um, reinterpret the the drawing. Uh, with, with, the, with the new knowledge of the referent, you need some extra visual and, and language processing. Uh, you also see activity in, um, oh, thank you. Uh -huh. You got a comment from the audience saying that if, if it's any consolation, a couple of interns who are laughing. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, so we also had the pleasure regions activated in, uh, in both insight and humor, the striatum and left amygdala, um, which apparently, even, even though the discovery is not that, that amazing, uh, it still, it still uh, induces pleasure uh, activation. Um, so these are the regions that were activated for both humor and insight. What about uh, regions that are specifically activated for humor? Well, uh, we only had uh, a few of those. We had the, uh, some regions in the temporal lobes, uh, the, te uh, the uh, temporal occipital junction and, uh, and the temporal pulse. These are high-level semantic uh, regions. These are regions where remote associations can converge in a meaningful way, um, as well as the medial prefrontal cortex. So, so we, we've managed to find a set of regions that are selective for humor once the element of discovery is controlled for. Now. Um, if you look at, uh, uh, at the ratings of how funny people find the drawings to be, we, we find a dose response as well. So the same regions that were uh, selective to humor, that were activated only for humor but not for non-humorous discovery, uh, the, great, the funnier the drawings were, the greater the activations in those regions were. So um, that, uh, that gives further evidence that uh, these, these regions uh, are somehow linked to humor. Um, so, okay, we found a set of regions that are uh, activated to, to humor, and, and they also show a dose response. Um, why would that induce the feeling of merit? Um, so, we have, uh, we have a tentative explanation for that. It is based on a theory uh, uh, that Irvin Biedermann, uh, uh, my advisor, has proposed a few, a few years ago. Uh, that is uh, based on, um, on a discovery that there is a gradient of mu opioid receptors that increase in density from uh, lower levels of the cortical hierarchy uh, where they're sparse uh, and, and uh, to higher levels of the cortical hierarchy. Now, let me unpack this statement. Um, so, uh, receptors are... Um, are the are molecules on the on the membranes of, of cells in this case brain cells that uh, that uh, bind that uh, interact with uh, substances in the brain so uh, in this case opioid receptors the uh, opioids would bind to them opioids occur naturally in the brain but you can also uh, get them uh, exogenously for example by injecting heroin um, and opioids are uh, associated with, with perceptual pleasure in general. Uh, you see that, for example, when you uh, block uh, opioid activity in people who enjoy music, uh, then um, they still are able to recognize uh, the musical pieces, but they don't enjoy it anymore. They don't get the same emotional chills uh, for the music. Um, and you see, and you see, uh, um, an increase in density the higher up the cortical hierarchy you go. So cortical hierarchy, there is, for example, this is the visual stream. Um, so the lower aspects of the cortical hierarchy, you have uh, cells that are sensitive to very simple features. So in the case of vision, uh, this, this is where the information from the eyes first come to the cortex. In the case of vision, you would have cells that are sensitive to uh, bars of a specific color orientation in a specific location in the visual field. And the higher up you go in the hierarchy, the more information converges and the more 
uh, complex uh, representations uh, are, are, uh, uh, can be found, uh, and eventually you get to faces and scenes and so on. Um, and another thing that occurs uh, throughout this hierarchy is an increased density of those mu opioid receptors. And we think that that might uh, underlie a motivational system uh, that uh, encourages people to consume a novel uh, but richly interpretable information. Um, this the sort of information that that is uh, presumably adaptive um, for for survivors because if you if you uh, if you have this information your decisions might be more informed and uh, you're more likely to survive um, and that and, and we know that humans do that we know that humans look are always looking for novel and uh, and interpretable information and we also know that uh, activity uh, higher up the hierarchy um, is um, corresponds to, uh, to stimuli that are novel, but richly interpretable. Um, so that, that's, what, that's, the, that's the thinking behind this. Um, and we had some, uh, some studies that, that looked into, into whether preference really correlates with activity in those, in those high-level cor uh, high uh, cortical regions. Uh, for example, we had an experiment in which uh, people uh, rated, rated images. Uh, for how much they uh, how much they like them, and these are the images that were most preferred. These were the images that were least preferred. Um, and when you subtract the activity of the most preferred uh, minus the least preferred, you end up uh, finding those high level uh, a greater activation in those uh, high level visual regions. Um, when you uh, present, uh, you present. Uh, images multiple times, people get bored with them. Uh, they they rated it uh, rated as less uh, uh, as less preferred, and you also see decreased activ activation in those high level uh, visual regions. Um, so in the case in the case of in the case of humor, uh, we know that uh, those those regions that we found in the temporal in the temporal lobes, those high, uh, high level semantic regions, are particularly Rich in opioid receptors, they are at the top of the of the uh, hierarchy, um, and uh, we thought that might that might be the basis uh, for uh, for mirth. Um, and so, to put it in a gen more general con context. Uh, there have been multiple theories as to what may uh, that, that suggest uh, that they know the necessary and sufficient condition conditions for what makes something funny. Uh, unfortunately, all of the theories are either too vague or or were disproven um, so far. But we can make an approximation uh, for convenience' sake and say that uh, what makes a discovery humorous is that it gives you a happy surprise. So this happy surprise can be uh, either just a feeling of superiority, relief, uh, sexual titillation, schadenfreude, but it can also be uh, just uh, a happy surprise because of the sheer cleverness. There are jokes that are based on just sheer cleverness, and we tried, this is why the jokes were not as funny, we tried to, to use jokes that, are, that don't have any element be, uh, besides cleverness uh, that makes them funny. What do you say? The fourth, Schadenfreude, uh, that's uh, a German word meaning, uh, but, but it's, it's used in English for this description. It, it means the uh, uh, enjoying someone else's suffering. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I think a lot of pranks and, you know, it's, so there is, there is a, a, a good taste for it. You, you have to have a certain level, not beyond that. You know, beyond that, people will, will find it uh, Disturbing, but below that you would find it you would find it amusing. So, um, so in, in the case of our sti uh, stimuli, we uh, we had the independent raters that um, uh, rated them on several dimensions, and we found that uh, there was a strong correlation between um, funniness and cleverness and surprise. But uh, there were, uh, but funniness was unrelated to complexity. So in our case, the stimuli were funny because they're clever, presumably. Um, so here's our tentative explanation for what makes something funny. Uh, basically, you have a surprising, uh, surprising link of uh, remote associations, uh, 
possibly in an absurd way, uh, and that causes a burst of activation in those high-level semantic regions. Um, this might lead to opioid activity there, which is uh, the uh, basis for, for the Mirth uh, experience. This is the happy surprise. This is, uh, in the case of clever humor, this is the basis for uh, Mirth um, when you enjoy humor. Um, so that's, that's what I have to say about humor appreciation. Um, this has been published in Cerebral Cortex with the following co-authors. Um, we, took, we took June's picture with, uh, with an Android phone, so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, cool. Do you have any questions for that before we get to the before we get to the good stuff? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, so so far there have been about thirty studies that looked into uh, into humor appreciation, like passive passively enjoying humor. Uh, but there have been uh, no studies that look at what goes on in the brain when you actually come up with a uh, with a humorous idea. And the thinking was, well, it's a, such a spontaneous and rare, rare event then that you, um, it will be difficult to capture enough of those events in the MRI to get any statistical uh, significance, and so there is no point of studying this. But this logic has, um, has didn't take into account these people. Um, uh, we have a lot of them in Los Angeles. Uh, these are uh, actually, I think, about half of the comedians, in, uh, successful comedians in the world, live in Los Angeles. Um, so these are improv comedians who can uh, improvise uh, rapidly and on cue, uh, come up with funny, funny, funny ideas within seconds uh, when they're asked to do so, uh, which is very useful for an MRI study where you want to capture a cognitive event. Yeah, so we had uh, six, uh, six improv comedians, we had seven stand-up comedians, uh, all professional with like uh, impressive, impressive CVs, uh, you know, like comedy specials and so on. Um, and, and we had uh, nine amateur comedians who had uh, been doing it for about half the time uh, of the professional comedians, uh, uh, but they seem promising, so th there is a good chance that they will make it eventually if they continue doing it. It takes about 10 years on average to become professional uh, comedian. Um, and also we had uh, for controls uh, uh, graduate students. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is an accurate picture. Uh, uh, and the thinking was that, uh, that it, it, is, it is known that, uh, or it, it, has, it has been um, uh, shown before that uh, professional comedians are typically highly intelligent, uh, even the ones that seem dumb. Um, and, and so we wanted a, co a control group that matches the intelligence without actually having to measure it. Um, and the tasks that they performed were based on the uh, New Yorker cartoon competition in which you, uh, you see a, an image uh, like this and you have to come up with a caption that is humorous, uh, like this one. Um, uh, and um, uh, this, by the way, is a bad example for the kind of stimuli we used because it's already funny. Like when you see the image, it's already funny. We, uh, for the experiment, we used images that were not initially funny because we wanted all the funniness to come out of the brains of the, of the comedians. Um, so we used images more like this one. Um, and this was the, the uh, arrangement of a trial. For two seconds you got an instruction word. You, uh, the instruction was either uh, humorous, mundane, or nothing. Humorous meant you have to come up with something humorous, one of the characters would say in the following 15 seconds. Mundane means something uh, expected or something non-humorous. And uh, nothing meaning just look at the image and don't think of, uh, not, don't try to think of a caption. And then, and then the, once you have it, you were also asked to rate it on a, uh, on a little keyboard in the MRI on a scale of one to four, how funny you think the caption you just came up with uh, was. And so this is an example for what one of our uh, participants came up with. Uh, yes. Uh, cool. So um, if you want to get a really nice brain activation uh, from, from a comedian, like a really strong signal, 
Um, you want to choose comedians that uh, are shaped like a lollipop, uh, skinny body, large head, and not move much when they tell jokes. That's if you ever if you ever looking for to do my experiment. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you just to give you a clue of of the the time course of activation, what, what happened in the brain uh, in one subject, what, what, what our paradigm can reveal. Uh, don't, don't worry too much about understanding everything. It's just sort of just to get an idea of uh, what it looks like. Um, so on the left, you're going to see the movie of Humorous uh, Idea. And on the right, you see, you're going to see the movie of uh, Mundane Idea. Once more. Yeah, so the resolution is, is image of activation every two seconds. So it's, yeah. um, okay, so taken together, together uh, the, these are, this is what all 40 participants uh, um, show when you contrast a trial scene with they uh, try to come up with something humorous uh, minus uh, trying to come up with something mundane. Uh, you see activation in... Uh, yeah, zero is the point in which the um, uh, the image appears. So uh, the image being like the picture that they have to come up with. So so after the instructions, but after after you got the instructions of what it's supposed to to do, but before. Um, and so the activity you see you see activity uh, in a temporal uh, again in high level semantic. Uh, regions in the temporal uh, in the temporal cortex in this case it's the temporal occipital junctions uh, on both sides uh, you also see activity in the medial prefrontal cortex this is a region that does uh, uh, monitor uh, monitoring your thought process and uh, top down cognitive control of the process are you asking a question yeah. yeah is is your null hypothesis in this experiment that uh, that 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 appears to be appears to be the case that you see acti activity uh, similar activity but but much greater for for humorous um, so it's not it's not that you are engaging in a completely different cognitive process it seems to be a similar process but some r particular regions are uh, differentiate themselves by doing a, a increased amount of amount of work for the humorous uh, in the in the humorous case um, and also you also see uh, you also see uh, activity in play in uh, reward or pleasure regions the striatum um, but notice that this activity occurs in the beginning of the trial so that's before you even come up with something humorous so uh, we think it, it might involve with the process of, uh, of generating the joke as opposed to uh, its appreciation. And uh, there are several, several regions that show dose responses here. Um, so uh, we see a dose response in the temporal occipital junction in the striatum, but not in the medial prefrontal cortex. Um, and the dose response here means that it's, it's, these regions are almost like a, a volume knob. So you, you uh, increase activity there, uh, result uh, in, subsequent, uh, in a subsequently funnier caption. So. Um, and just to give you an idea of what a dose response can look like in one comedian, um, here, is, uh, here is a contrast of uh, the humorous minus mundane condition in, in a one uh, improv comedian. By the way, the blue colors means uh, greater activity for the mundane. Uh, okay, and uh, and here is and here is the same comedian when you contrast within the humorous condition uh, the uh, the captions that ended up being rated the funny uh, funniest minus the ones being rated the less funny. Did you try asking other people to rate just to make sure to get the right to rate how funny they are, or just everybody grades your own? Yeah, so, so we, had, we had both, um, thank you for reminding me, we had both, uh, uh, th both the participants themselves rate uh, how funny the captions they came up with was right after they come up with the caption, and we had independent raters, and in both cases that gave us the same result, uh, that is, we had these, these regions uh, showing dose response, and, this, uh, and the middle prefrontal cortex not. So, 
Um, so, but, but, but you see the pattern is very similar in both cases here, even though it's completely orthogonal uh, com uh, comparison, uh, which suggests that, that this whole pattern of activity in this comedian's brain uh, acts like a volume knob, uh, increased, uh, increased level of activity in this, in, uh, in this pattern results in funnier, uh, funnier ideas. Um, now, so far we were talking about the, all of this uh, participants in, as one group. Um, here we, we see the uh, comparison of the different groups of subjects. So we had uh, professional comedians, amateurs, and controls. And um, uh, we, what, what, we, what we see here is that if you look at the, uh, uh, in the temporal regions, in this high-level semantic region where remote associations are, are, can converge in a meaningful way, um, we, see, uh, we see greater activity in this region uh, in professional comedians uh, and then amateurs than controls. And this per pattern reverses when you look at the uh, medial prefrontal cortex, which is the region that does uh, uh, the top-down monitoring and control of this search. This is, the, um, this is when you deliberately try to affect your, 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 your search process for something funny. And I remember that the professional comedians were divided into two groups. We had uh, professional improv comedians and, prof uh, and, and stand-ups. And uh, even though they had similar amount of experience, the uh, professional improv comedians uh, have more experience with similar tasks to the one we, we used. So they used to improvise uh, in, uh, uh, in a context of uh, improvise funny ideas in the context of hum human interaction. Um, and so we expect that whatever, whatever uh, effect of expertise we, we will see, uh, it will be strongest for the uh, professional improv comedians. And indeed, that's what we see. We see that uh, uh, these, these expertise effects are strongest for professional improvs and stand-ups, then amateurs, then controls. Um, and here is an explanation for what we think that, that means, this, uh, this result means. Um, so we know that uh, we think that this is where the humorous ideas are actually being generated. This is uh, this is where um, you you um, activate associations and, and other temporal regions. This is where you activate the associations and link them uh, in the during the construction of a joke. The medial prefrontal cortex is where you uh, you try to direct this process uh, in a top-down fashion. Um, you see, you see medial prefrontal activity in every type of creative creative task, but the regions, the, the other regions that are involved in a creative task, seem to vary from uh, improvising jazz to um, to generating stories and so on. Um, so, so uh, the explanation is that that the more experience you have doing uh, doing comedy, uh, the more the less you need a top-down top directed search, the more you can just rip the fruits of your spontaneous associations. Um, this, by the way, corresponds to, might be the translation to neuroscience language of the common improv teacher's dictum, get out of your head. So that, that might be what it means, you know, uh, decrease, decrease, the, uh, decrease the activity of the medial prefrontal cortex and allow uh, a more uh, uninterrupted flow of associations in the temporal occipital junc uh, junction and other temporal regions and trust that it will eventually lead to a funny idea. Uh, that's what they should say, I think. <laughs> um, uh, um, interestingly, we also find... Um, right, uh, we also find uh, uh, these group differences in the, uh, in the striatum. Uh, we see that uh, uh, when you contrast, this, this is the difference between uh, uh, coming up with something uh, uh, humorous minus mundane. You see greatest difference of stratum activity in controls, so then followed by amateurs and professionals. And uh, we thought of a few explanations. One could be emotional styles. We know uh, comedians are more depressive, so uh, they... Uh, it could, and one of the uh, indicators of, of depression in the brain is a quick, quicker reduction of striatum activity. Um, another possibility was that um, it could be that comedians are, uh, are more adapted to the, 
process of coming up with something humorous, they're less excited about it, it's less rewarding for them, so um, there is uh, less uh, activity there. And finally, it could be that um, it's, it's actually acts as a signal uh, to, to the rest of the brain, particularly the temporal lobes, that, uh, that uh, of, of, a, of a context or a mood in which, in which uh, humorous associations are more likely to be activated. Um, and uh, the, uh, I'm probably going to uh, skip, skip this, but, but the, two, the first two explanations are eliminated, if you want to know how, ask me how. Um, because they have predictions that don't come true. And then we are left with uh, the uh, suggestion that uh, the signal in the striatum uh, actually, actually has some causal effect. It actually, it actually uh, increases the likelihood of coming up with humorous associations. Um, and if that was the case, then we, we would predict a dose response, meaning that early on in the trial, uh, striatum activity would... Um, would uh, would greater stratum activity would correlate with uh, a subsequently greater funnier uh, uh, funnier captions generation. Uh, indeed, that's what we see uh, when you look at the comparison of uh, um, of the two conditions, humorous uh, humorous and mundane. As we've seen before, there is a greater activity in the stratum in the humorous condition early on in the trial. But then you also see a dose response within the humorous condition. Uh, both based on self-rating, uh, uh, if you rated uh, it, the greater the activity in striatum was in the beginning of the trial, the uh, greater uh, the funniness of the caption based on your rating and other people rating. Um, and we also find if we split the professionals to improv, uh, professional improv and stand-ups, it also falls within the pattern, uh, the expected the pattern of expertise. All right, um, last part. Um, so what's the difference then between, we, we looked at, uh, at active uh, humor creation, we looked at passive humor appreciation, um, but uh, it seem, they seem to involve similar regions. What are the differences? Um, so uh, here in red you see, um, you see the early, uh, the early uh, part of, of humor creation. These are the regions activated at the beginning of the trial when you try to come up with something humorous. In blue, you see the regions that are activated when you, uh, in the end of the trial when you uh, actually come up with, with the funny thing. And in yellow, uh, you see overlaid from the previous experiment, uh, the activation for passive humor appreciation. So you see the regions are more or less similar, but there is a slight, uh, slight advancement advancement forward of, of the uh, activity uh, when uh, in, in the process of coming up with something funny. It starts here and it gets uh, more forward in the cortex. These are somewhat higher level semantic regions. Um, but uh, <coughs> they're nevertheless more, uh, more or less similar regions uh, for humor appreciation and humor, uh, humor creation. What, what they differ most in is the time course. Um, so when you look at the, uh, at the regions in the temporal cortex, you see, uh, you see that during humor uh, appreciation, you see a, a quick rise, uh, relatively quick, it's a few seconds long, but uh, a rise and fall in activity there, uh, corresponding to the relatively fast event of getting the joke. Um, and when you look in, the, uh, in humor uh, creation, you see a gradual increase in, of activity uh, indexing the uh, gradual construction of the joke, of the uh, humorous meaning. Uh, the striatum, on the other hand, uh, seem to have uh, the, those activities coincides for humor creation and appreciation, which suggests that because, because it occurs at the peak, it peaks earlier uh, in the striatum in the case of humor uh, creation than in the temporal regions, uh, this, this is another uh, piece of evidence suggesting that uh, it probably has some causal effect there uh, as opposed to, um, as opposed to um, just, uh, j just uh, indexing the funniness itself. Um, yeah, I don't know if I should show the slide. Okay, let's, let's, just, let's just do the summary. Um, 
So um, we've seen we've seen that um, uh, the, the thing the, the regions most most involved in humor uh, creation and appreciation, uh, the temp those temporal high level semantic temporal regions. Uh, these regions are uh, rich in mu opioid receptors. You see greater activity there uh, when you create and enjoy humor relative to uh, creating mundane captions or or uh, um, getting if getting ex uh, discovery experiences. And um, there is also a dose response in those regions, both in the case of humor creation and appreciation, the greater activity, the funnier cap the captions you come up with, um, or the funnier your rate, uh, funny things that you see. And finally, uh, those regions show greater activation with more comedic expertise. Um, this, uh, this uh, tend that this might be tentatively linked to, uh, to a motivational system that uh, uh, relies on, on this gradient of myopia receptors in which uh, there is greater, um, greater activity in those high level regions is pleasurable, thus uh, uh, inducing humans to pursue, uh, uh, to sample stimuli that are more, uh, that are more informative, uh, more, uh, more, more richly interpretable and novel. Um, and uh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So these are some guys, some people who helped. Um, and yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Is the activation of those interesting parts of the brain subject to, uh, or does that change with the consumption of, uh, of, uh, of substances, say alcohol or ca caffeine or something else? Well, we, yeah. Well, we know we know that we know that uh, uh, if you drink alcohol, you're more likely to laugh, and that's why comedy clubs. Uh, I guess one of the reasons they they sell them, and encourage people to drink them. Um, I, I think it what it does, and I don't know it for sure. But uh, I don't know if anybody knows it for sure exactly how it works. But it's probably it's probably in, it decreases the threshold. For uh, for this uh, the activation of of, of uh, this uh, pleasurable re reaction, uh, yeah. So a lot of MRI, MRI work gets me leaves me wanting because people seem to stop with or find as a goal the region lighting up. And maybe they say sometimes <clears throat> this region is known for X, Y, and Z, else other things, and hmm, I wonder what that means. And this is a region we we localize something. Um, and this, that's a general high-level remark, and I just understand that's part of the tradition of people who do MRI studies like yourself. Um, when it comes to somebody thinking deeper in the machinery, that might be down to the neuron level, for all I know, or circuits. Um, but I also, in the spirit of that question, I'm left wanting. Go back, go back a couple of slides. Uh -huh. Tell your conclusion right there. Uh -huh. You're a second bullet. Yeah. That seems so second. I mean, second bullet, not uh, yeah, yeah. the joy of humor. Oh, this yeah. one, yeah. It seems so weak. Yeah. Uh, as as the general, uh, you know, climax of the talk. As a as a as a um, description of the really wild and unexplainable mystery of humor. You might say, well, you know, it seems to be linked to you know, our love of information. Yeah. Does that make us? Does that make a creature? Gasp and jump around when something is realized. I mean, it's it just seems that we're missing something here. Yes. And, uh, and I'm curious to hear your reflections, not about the first part of my nasty remark, but about the second. Yeah, no, I do, I do agree with the, the the first the first part. Definitely, I definitely find it frustrating that you get don't get to the algor you don't get to the algorithm. You can yeah, get some clues and to it, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's still helping us a lot. I, I, I get yeah. that, but you must have your own deep, especially from a humor family and being a humorist. Yeah. yourself have a sense that there's probably a lot more going on to this than that bullet says. I know you want to be careful and cautious because you're a scientist, but um, um, so I'm not a hundred percent sure I understand the question. I know I know that humor, this might might be real. Life. I guess I'm asking, what the heck is humor, and why do human beings have this whole seems very human centric notion of of humorous responses and joy of laugh and laughter itself, and I. So, so, so it's, too. I mean, it, it's it's um, you know, it's very different than you know looking at. Um, it seems qualitatively different and not 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 a necessity, even in a system that would get pleasure from learning something new. 
I enjoyed learning something new. Yeah, so the so, idea of the, the necro cube pop out leading to this, all this gasping pleasure, it comes in, you know, with bursts of laughter. It just does not capture by that bullet. Yeah, so 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 I think I think I got your I think I got your uh, your point. So, um, yeah, I think I think generally, um, even though we haven't quite figured out what makes humor humor, uh, it's generally a happy a happy surprise. So it could be a happy surprise either you know either. Uh, uh, schadenfreude or superiority or relief or all of those things, but it could also be a, a, a just enjoyment, a su surprising cleverness. Uh, so you enjoy the sheer cleverness, and we think that just that that's. A to I agree that that might be too speculative to put in in the final slide, but, but no, no, I, no, I wasn't complaining. I wasn't saying it was speculative. Okay. I think it's, it seems rather conservative. Okay, um, but I was just asking if you had your own sense for. What may have, what may be? I was asking you to speculate more. Okay. Um, what, well, what, what, given your understanding and what you've been doing, and your 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 passion with which you explore humor, what what's your sense about where this is going in terms of what we might discover with deeper analyses, more data someday? Maybe there's a whole. So, subsystem that that evolved for good reasons that goes beyond the pleasure of learning something new or the joy of a gentle surprise, but is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is some sort of a qualitative jump in a function or a behavior or experience that is, has some unique properties that goes beyond the gentle surprise, a surprise or a clever surprise. Yeah, so, so you're looking for a very, a very specific humor uh, no, no, emotion? For specific, it cuts more to the core of humor yeah. as opposed to a surprise, a surprisingly interesting learning. Uh, so that's, I think that's one specific case, though. I think that that's the or, case of yeah. But um, so uh, I think the, the more the more you try to um, to, to to limit the definition of, it, of what makes makes something funny, the more you end up uh, uh, excluding a lot of counterexamples. That, that that's the issue I think with a lot of. Uh, humor theories. I know, I know there are many, many elements that can amplify humor, and many, ele but they're not necessary. Uh, I guess let me ask a different way. I had to push yeah. it too hard. We're in a different, we're, we're, we're in a different planet, yeah. um, planet X. People are sort of the same. They get stuff done. They make scientific discoveries. They educate their their children, but there's no humor. Yeah. No one laughs. Um, what did evolution leave out that that somehow got stuck in, in our, on our trajectories that makes us special and different in the fact that we have this humor, this, that we even have a word for it, we describe yeah. it, we know how to in, in, engage socially with humor. Um, so it's not clear. One, one, one explanation to it, I, uh, I love, so, so, so you have two things. You have the expression of humor, which is the social thing, right? right. You, you laughter that, and then, and then you have the internal mirth. Uh, and one one uh, evolutionary explanation I, I love, uh, which may or may not be true, is that it it has to do with uh, encouraging people to debug their own thought process. So you discover you discover a, an error, uh, an erroneous assumption, because it leads to uh, an absurd conclusion, and then and then instead of uh, feeling the pain of oh now I have to figure uh, it out, it actually encourages you, makes you enjoy the debugging process of, of your own thought process. Uh, so that, that would suggest that there's something intrinsically foundation or foundational in humor in, in a bounded rational system that can't know itself so well or the world. Yeah, there, there is, there is. For example, I mean, so what I want to sort of build on that versus the second bullet to me is like, yeah, I yeah. guess so, um, yeah. <laughs> This doesn't seem very exciting. Yes, yes. Uh, interesting as a distinct thing. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, um, I, I do. There is there is a whole book uh, by uh, Inside Jokes by uh, Harley Dent and Adams that, that make this suggest, suggestion. Unfortunately, uh, there are some counter examples to their uh, their theory too. So, um, even though it seems to explain a lot, I, I believe uh, about why we have humor and. Has anybody ever done studies of um, competency and humor and success in life? 
Right. Uh, in other words, is it linked to intelligence? Is it, it is. To it is. Uh, intelligence is one of the highest predictors of sense of humor. And probability. How about, how about uh, problem solving in general? I mean, some kinds of, kinds of problem solving. We basically find out it's, it's, a, it's a really important correlate at the executive function level for, of do, being able to put things together or to do continual debugging, as you suggested. Again, this is probably, we're, we're going to get lunch so we can to keep on going. But. Yeah. But but I think I think you, you may have a point there. Yeah, it's it, it, it does seem to it, does, it definitely it definitely correlates strongly with intelligence. So yeah, yeah. Um, so I had two questions. Um, the first was sort of a follow up on that one, which is um, you mentioned like the general motivation behind humor, and I think like the infomer one uh, thinks about how like internally it's like oh like an aha moment sort of, and then it's like information that you like you like understand it for yourself versus like the societal aspect, which is like when you discover something of certain like that, is the motivation behind humor in that sense that you get to share that with other people or do you think that that doesn't really matter? So I think I think the mirrors itself uh, must be uh, must be beyond uh, the uh, beyond the social functions. Uh, like all of our emotions, we we, we have ex expressions for them. We we uh, we display them on our faces and so on. So so it does have. Uh, so, so this this communication have some some social function, uh, but I think uh, the, the the peculiar combinations of things that make you laugh um, cannot be explained by oh well it it's a need to make a social um, it's it's needed in the social dynamics somehow it it's it's a you would expect things to be the the, the um, set of things that make you laugh to be more uh, social specific then. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then the second one is, um, so you mentioned how like if you have more experience with being uh, funny, I guess, because you're like a professional versus an amateur versus like um, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nobody. Obviously, obviously like the amount, like when you're trying to come up with the humorous caption, people who are like trained or at least have practice doing it will be better at it. But when you told um, professional comedians to do nothing with an image, so look at the image and then come up with no funny caption, and then when you had your control group do the same thing, um, were the comedians still using more of that brain, those brain sections than the people who are amateurs or um, like the grad students you used as a control? Because innately they're just like naturally looking for funny things, I don't know. You know, this is this is this is a good question. Unfortunately, we use this condition for for the normalizing so uh, uh, the baseline. But uh, it 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 should be possible to it should be possible to to look at it's it's an interesting question. Like if you um, and also they had difficult some some of them reported difficulty to do the the task of thinking of nothing, especially right. the comedians were having more trouble. So yeah, yeah, to just look at the image. Yeah. Um. So I'm interested in the fact that in your, your study you, uh, you maintain sensitivity to confounding variables and, uh, and you mentioned awareness that correlation is a defined causation um, in uh, your work. And so I was wondering like, when you're identifying uh, control groups for your studies, like you were mentioning graduate students versus professional comedians, how do you identify standards that you should be normalizing or how do you identify that your control group is perhaps a good replica of professional comedians but with one thing the same uh, and trying yeah. to eliminate some of the confusion you might have with confounding Yeah, so there, there. It's whenever you study humans, it's possible to think of all the possible uh, aspects, but uh, but we did we did control for um, age and other, you know, and other other elements we can think of. We put it in the uh, as a, as a confounding variables in the regression, uh, and it didn't seem to affect the results. Um, yeah, it's whenever you have select groups of people that uh, based on some properties you never know what other properties come with those properties so that's yeah it's an issue but let me see yes uh you found that the reward centers were activated less for the professional comedians when they were generating jokes yeah the pleasure centers yeah. Uh, i'm curious how you were able to tell that that wasn't because they were uh used to doing that 
Okay, because because when you uh, so, so this graph was representing the subtraction of humorous minus mundane, but when you look at the subtraction of humorous minus nothing, um, then you see that they are as high in this respect as the as the controls. Um, so so it doesn't see it seem, the effects seem to to be in the in the difference between uh, humor uh, generating humorous and mundane captions rather than uh, the humorous itself. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.